Hey everyone, Dr. Mary here. For today's adventure, we're going to Illinois, specifically Alton, Illinois. In Alton, there's a large pocket park called the Lincoln Douglas Square at the intersection of Broadway and Market. I marked the location of the park on this portion of a topographic map with a blue dot. The park is right at the intersection of U.S. Highway 67 and Illinois Highway 100, a very, very busy place. Why is this place significant? Let's let the historical markers of this park start the story. The first marker we'll look at gives a good overview of what happened here. The seventh and last debate between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas in the 1858 U.S. Senatorial Campaign was held at this site on October 15. Approximately 5,000 people gathered in front of the old city hall to hear the two candidates. The debates received national attention with Lincoln arguing against the extension of slavery into the Western territories and Douglas campaigning for states' rights. The following November, Douglas defeated Lincoln for the Senate seat, but two years later, Lincoln defeated Douglas in the race for the presidency. This marker was sponsored by the Greater Alton Chamber of Commerce and the Illinois State Historical Society and dated April 2007. Next, there's a replica of a monument for the 50th anniversary of the debate. It reads, 1858. 1908, erected by the citizens of Alton, commemorating the closing debate between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas, which took place here October 15, 1858. The replica was a gift of the Exchange Club of Alton, dated 1986, and is composed of Missouri red granite, which is quite durable. The plaza here is full of dedication bricks and tiles. One at the center is very large, and its lengthy engraving states. On this site, on the 15th of October, 1858, on a temporary platform built in front of City Hall, Abraham Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas engaged in the seventh and final encounter of their famous series of debates. At an early hour on that date, the spectators began to arrive. They came on foot, on horseback, by carriage, lumber wagon, steamer, and railroad. By noon, they numbered 6,000. At the hour of two, Douglas opened the debate with a speech of one hour. His speech was flat and unsatisfactory, unredeemed by a single sparkle of wit or patriotic elevation. In his reply of one and one half hours, Lincoln took the charges of Douglas and scattered them to the winds. His performance was deemed clear and logical honest and candid. Douglas's half-hour rejoinder was in better spirit than his opening, but the consensus of the day was that Lincoln had scored the victory. Although Lincoln won the non-binding popular vote, Douglas was elected U.S. Senator by the state legislature in January 1859. Lincoln was elected President of the United States in November 1860. City Hall was destroyed by fire in 1923. The stone wall behind this plaza stands where the last wall of City Hall stood. The life-size sculptures of Lincoln and Douglas, created by Jerry McKenna of Byrne, Texas, under commission by the Alton Godfrey Rotary Club, were dedicated on October 15, 1995. So what's the deal here? Stephen A. Douglas was one of the two U.S. Senators for Illinois, an incumbent. He was a Democrat up for re-election. Abraham Lincoln was the candidate put up by the new Republican Party for the seat of U.S. Senator from Illinois. As Douglas began campaigning in each of the nine Illinois congressional districts, Lincoln followed him, engaging him in discourse at each event. It seems Lincoln made himself a problem for Douglas. So Douglas agreed to debate Lincoln formally in each of the last seven districts confident that his own well-honed oratorial skills would prevail over Lincoln's. The structure of the debates was rather simple. The first speaker would talk for an hour, the other would then have the floor for an hour and a half, a 
after which the first speaker would have half an hour to respond. Three solid hours of pure entertainment for all the people who would attend. And they came in the thousands, indeed at times tens of thousands, with plenty of journalists to report on the debates. The candidates traveled separately and met first in Ottawa, then Freeport, followed by Jonesboro, Charleston, and Galesburg. At Quincy next, Douglas was sick with bronchitis and wasn't at his best. After Quincy, the two men traveled by riverboat together down the Mississippi River to Alton. There they met in debate at the intersection of Broadway and Market, at the site which is now a pocket park, still at the intersection of Broadway and Market. For all his reputation as a splendid orator, Douglas met his match in Lincoln. Lincoln initially was on the defensive, and things looked bad for the challenger. But in Charleston, Lincoln gained his footing. Through the debates, Lincoln was astute and developed the theme of the immorality of slavery in opposition to Douglas's maintaining the status quo. It was widely considered that Lincoln far bested Douglas at Alton. But what was the result of these debates? From 1789 to 1913, that is, prior to the 17th Amendment, senators were elected by the state legislatures after a popular vote was taken to elect them. This was somewhat similar to current presidential elections, where popular votes are held, but only indirectly affect who is elected president. What happened in the 1858-1859 Illinois senatorial election was that Lincoln's Republican Party captured the popular vote some 190,000 to 166,000. But, due to the geography of districting, Democrats won the most seats in the state legislature and, therefore, Douglas went on to win, keeping the U.S. Senate seat. But the debates did much to publicize Lincoln and to enhance his reputation nationwide. Two years later, Lincoln won the U.S. presidential election. In the time afterward, as a senator, Douglas tried mightily to prevent the Civil War, working hard to effect a compromise. After it became apparent no reconciliation was immediately possible, Douglas spoke with Lincoln, and indeed, knowing the resolute frame of mind of many in power in the South, advised Lincoln to call up 200,000 troops rather than the initial 75,000 Lincoln intended. Stephen A. Douglas died shortly thereafter, and Abraham Lincoln presided over a great national conflict. Among other things, the Lincoln-Douglas debates set the precedent for the presidential debates we have today. But that is another story. Talking about other stories, there is a series of historical informational markers which lead the visitor on a trek through history here in Alton. The History Trail begins here and along with its markers, is worthy of its own episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, stay safe and travel well.